Hey YouTube, Fired Up Prepper here, and today's video is on uh, a question, and that question is this. Do you think that the people, the citizens of Louisiana that are being affected by this extreme flooding, over 31 inches of rain, do you think it's SHTF for them? Do you think they're thinking, wow, what could I have done? How could I have prepared to be in a better situation than uh, sitting on the top of my house or, uh, you know, clinging on to a tree? So let's talk about this. I'm not here to criticize by any means. I'm here to help and just help those. So if you live in any kind of a high flood plain or a uh, coastal area or a river anywhere that can be flooded severely or has flooded severely, like what they're seeing now, how can you better prepare? What can you do? What do you need to have? You know, you wake up in the middle of the night and there's a foot of floor on your bedroom floor. There's a foot of water on your bedroom floor. What do you do? Whether you're by yourself, you and your wife, you have kids, you have animals. What is the game plan? That's number one. What is the plan? Have a plan of action. Have a game plan in place. Okay. So, what type of things, what type of items do you need in order to put yourself in a better situation and ultimately possibly save yourself, right? And your family. What do you need to have? Well, I would think the number one and two item would be some type of an inflatable boat, watercraft, or a John boat. Doesn't have to be a big fancy bass boat or sea boat or anything. You need something to put the family and the dogs in and some supplies and, and get to safety in your boat. The number one or two item also is life jackets, life preservers. I don't care if they're the old-fashioned kind. Get the nice little uh, vest ones for the children. Get floaties. Get whatever you have to get. And have all of this properly staged, you know, in your garage, uh, you know, off the floor a little way so... You know, that's going to be the key now. Because if it's already flooding and you're waking up to water in your home, a uh, clock is ticking, right? Uh, so, number one and two, I don't know which one. Maybe the boat's more important. At least you're getting on top of the water. Number two, the life preservers, life jackets, life vests floating, whatever it takes to help sustain life if the boat turns over to give you an opportunity to live and keep your head above water. What you have to remember is it wouldn't even hurt to have like bicycle helmets or something like that. Why? Because most of your deaths don't come to drowning in a flood like that. It comes to being hit and impelled with debris, getting your head hit on a log, on a tree, on a house, a car, whatever, anything that's floating in that water that can injure you or kill you. So think about those type of things. Uh, you probably want to have, you know, the basic stuff. You're not going to have a lot of time, so you got to have all this stuff staged in one part and say, come on family, let's go. <clears throat> Grab the dog, the cats, whatever, the birds, whatever. 
and get out the door, get in the boat, and go. Now you probably have a choice to make, depending on the type of vid uh, vehicle that you have. If you know, let's say the let's say the water in your home and outside your home <clears throat> is anywhere from six inches to a foot to two foot high. <clears throat> you know, do you try and get out <clears throat> with your vehicle, or do you? get in the boat so that's a decision right there I'm thinking you take a boat to safety you get in the car the car could stall you're screwed the only thing that would help is if you do have an inflatable raft and you have those life jackets then you could go as far as you could get in the vehicle now if you got a small car I'm talking about if you have a four-wheel drive or a dually pickup or a Hummer, something like that. If you have something that sits up a ways, but not if you have a regular car or a regular SUV, don't even attempt it. Get in the dang boat and go to go somewhere where it's safe and it's not flooding. Uh, remember, though, if you have an inflatable, you need a way to inflate it. Uh, <clears throat> whether it's going to be an electric pump at the house, a pump that's going to plug into your car, or one of those foot stomper pumps. So think about that, or maybe there's a battery-operated one. So you got to get that thing inflated and get it inflated fast. So there's some decisions to be made. Uh, what else? So supplies. Remember here, the number one thing is you want you know yeah you want to have your your wallet and maybe you know your uh, your vital papers, copies of your vital papers, whatever. Uh, because you don't know what you're coming home to. What if that water goes up five, six foot in your home and just destroys everything and it's all mud and filth when you get back, all your, all that stuff is ruined, so. But yeah, you, wanna, you might wanna have uh, maybe a small cooler of uh, something to eat uh, and water, things like that. Just make sure you're keeping it fresh every now and then, just rotate it. Uh, you know, you have your bug out bags. If you have your bug out bags for everybody, grab those and go. Everything should be staged in a common area where you can grab and go. So uh, I hate to see what's going on in Louisiana. You know, people's lives are gonna be changed forever. Uh, homes in ruins, things like that, losing everything. There's gonna be loss of life, loss of pets. Uh, you know, so it's terrible. Don't leave your pets behind. You have to have a plan to take your pets with you. Don't leave them, you know, there was the flooding back in the spring and someone had tied their dog to the front porch and left. The, when they rescued the dog, his head was barely above water. I mean, he was just waiting to die. It was, it was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. So make a plan for your pets to bring them with. Uh, if you know it's getting bad and it's getting bad and you got horses and cattle, you need to make plans to get them to safe ground or safe place you don't want to lose all your livestock you don't want to lose your horses uh, so you know those are things you need to plan for too uh, maybe mark your home in a way letting people know that uh, you're okay that you left the house uh, you went to safe safe area important 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 yes bring your cell phones and but, and it's one good reason why you need to have your cell phone charged. Whether you're driving in your car, you should have it plugged in at night. When you're sleeping, it should be plugged in. Uh, you know, so you always have a full battery as close to possible. There are solar little battery packs out there you can get. You might think about one of those. There are booster battery deals that you can plug into they, to your phone. But also, emergency radio emergency weather radio and emergency communication radios uh, like little small ham radios little small walkie talkies uh, so you can communicate with people in uh, different ways in case the cell phone network is not working properly so think about those but uh, you know try and get your neighborhood together try and share ideas and preparedness 
But, uh, you know, I just hate to see what's going on. But the more prepared you are, not the less affected you're going to be, but the safer you're going to be, the more uh, opportunity that you're going to have to come out, uh, not ahead, but you're going to be able to come out at least alive and safe uh, during this flood. So, anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, Share it. Comment down below if you have anything to add. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Fired up.